One of the reasons I believe this series, God Is, is so important is simply because when we know God's name, we get to experience God's nature. When we know God's name, we get to experience God's nature. That line alone, that line alone is enough to tear the whole church up. I'm going to say it again. When we know God's name, we get to experience God's nature. Okay? So let's do this deductively. Are you taking good notes? Somebody in the comments, I want you to take really good notes right here. On one side of your notes, write name. Okay? On the other side of the note, write nature. Okay? So, so on your notes, you should have name and you should have what? Okay, one side you should have, other side you should have. Okay, so un, put a line under name, under name, okay? Under name, let's just, let's just, let's just break it down. Name, put, put number one, what you are called. Number two, what you answer to. Number three, what you did not pick. <laughs> okay, my name's Michael. Michael, I didn't pick it. It was given to me because I guess my dad wanted to hear his name said again. So he was like, hey, I'm Michael. I'm going to name my firstborn son Michael. Then my dad started something. I'm Michael Dwayne. My dad is Michael Dwayne. My brother is Darius Dwayne. So then I'm the oldest. I have a child. I have Xander Dwayne, Michael Dwayne, Mason Dwayne, Miles Dwayne. Then D said, since I'm the baby brother, now he got Champ Dwayne. Chance Dwayne, and we started a little tradition. Every male, we put this in our kids from the moment they can breathe. If you have a boy, his middle name will be Dwayne. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Why do I believe in that so much when I didn't pick it? It was instilled in me. So when you see name, number one, what you're called. My dad, mom, chose to call me Michael. Okay? What you answer to, Michael. Okay, now on the other side, right, nature, all right, it is the essence of who you are, the characteristic that goes with who you are, nature. So, so let's talk about this, and this alone, this one formula is what you need on a day-to-day basis, okay? So let's just do this deductively, Jehovah Jireh, so under name, put Jehovah Jireh, spell it the best way you can, nobody gonna see your notes but you. Somebody going to get your notes two weeks from now and say, Jehovah Jigga, Jigga, she preaching about Jay-Z in here, ain't she? No, so Jehovah Jireh under name. Now, under nature, put what? Provides. All right? So, so, oh, this is so good. So, now, let's put it all together. His name is Jehovah Jireh. His nature is to provide. Did you care? It's in his nature. I can't help it. I don't care how serious a moment is. It's in my nature to laugh. I'm jocular about it. I can't, I don't know where it came from. Things could be going wrong. I never forget when I tore my knee up. They said I wouldn't be able to walk for about six months. I was in the hospital laughing. Oh, this, (laughs) I guess I'm going to have to preach in a wheelchair. Like, I was laughing, all that. And people are like, why are you? It's in my nature to find the good in stuff. Did you catch me? So what am I realizing? This is so rich what you're about to catch. Many of you don't trust God because you don't know his names. Because you don't know his name, you cannot depend on his nature. But because you have experienced other names and you've seen the wishy-washiness of their natures, you imply that because they're inconsistent, he's inconsistent. All right, who's ever had somebody say they're going to come through for you? Didn't come through. Whoever has somebody say, you can trust me, and they betrayed you. Whoever has somebody say, I love you, I ain't going nowhere, and you don't know where they at right now. So can I ask you a question? How do you expect me? Let's think very practically. How do you expect to trust a God you have never seen when the people you see daily It's because we have been so good at having church, we have not been learning. Church has become so entertaining, and for a season, it needs to become educational. Did you catch that? I'm going to free you, okay? When praises go up, what scripture is that? (laughs) 
All right, here it is. Finish this scripture. And he'll never put more on you. That's a Kurt Franklin song. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This is out of Psalms. This is going to bless you. God is good. And all the time. They just said that at your mama church. So what do we know? We know lyrics. We know cliches. And you want to know the problem is? You be going through all this hell. And you feel with all this entertainment. And the devil show up to your house. And you be in there talking about something. He won't put more on me than we can bear. And the devil like. What? Uh-uh. When praises go up, blessings come down. In theory, it's right. In theory, it's right. But I need the unadulterated word of God. Why? Because if all we do in church is entertain, you will have a church full of people who only know how to have praise breaks. If you educate, you'll have people who can stay strong when stuff breaks. Michael! And God sent me here to tell you, listen to me, when you learn my name, you learn my nature. So, so this is why, this is why, and I mean it's from the depths of my heart, that, that, that when you leave here today, I want you to even say, you know, when I say, when I say Jehovah Jireh, every time I say a name of God, and can I ask you a question? I want to see if this has been working. Who's kind of just been researching his names? Anybody? Okay, thank you for your honesty. Just lately, you've been like, let me see what else they call them. You know, let me see what else they, because I want you now to be able to say, you know what? If you're in need, because, oh, this is rich. B. Phillips and his devotional classic, Your God is Too Small. B. Phillips and his devotional classic, Your God is Too Small, says the image we have of God, whom we believe God to be, will determine the outcomes of the challenges we face. He writes, the trouble with many people today is that they have not found a God big enough for their modern needs. See, B. Phillips' classic devotional, God is too small. He said the problem with the average person is that your view of God determines your outcome. And because you don't view God big enough, you feel as if you don't have nothing to call on for your everyday needs. Michael, my God is bigger than my anxiety. He's bigger than my issues. I love what the names of God are. And watch this. The name of God are doors that give access to God's house. Please write that. Y'all, I'm spitting if you receive it. The name of God are doors that give access to God's house. Okay. All right. I, uh, we were still in the pandemic. I could have did an illustration on the screen and had Dre do it. But since I'm live, just use your imagination. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Let's build a house. Okay, that's the house, okay? So you walk in this house, like you confess with your mouth, believe with your heart that he rose from the dead with all power in his hand, now you say, you in the house. Okay, I'm gonna show you how frustrated and why you're frustrated. You give your life to Christ, you now what? In the house. But in the house are a whole lot of rooms. All right, so you in the den, chilling like, this is nice. This is nice, man. They got air. It's not, you see that TV right there? I got vision. I'm getting vision now. It's it's comfortable. I got comfort. This is nice. You get home, you go to the kitchen. It's groceries. You're like, ooh, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my head. This is good. Ooh, this is nice. It's pressure over. Man, this house pressure, Pastor Mike. He got a den. He got a bathroom. He got a kitchen. But you know what happened? Then all of a sudden, you start getting under attack. And the den ain't comfortable. And all the food in the refrigerator don't fulfill you. Then all of a sudden, you look around, and there are doors in the house. And you go to open a door, and it don't open. See, grace is when God allows a door to open that you didn't even know you had access to. What I'm trying to get you to realize is when you understand the names of God, the name of God, the names of God are doors. So watch this. When hell is breaking loose, it's a door called shalom. 
But, but let me free you because and, uh, this is rich. I'm, I'm going to be bouncing today, but I need your help. Your prayer life is going to go to another level. Many of us can't even pray because we run out of stuff to say. So no, so here it is. You've been catching hell lately. You've been frustrated. I just need a break. Lord, if you don't mind, just take... You, you, and, and God is like, come on. I just need you. To, I'm just tired. I just want He's like, come on. I'm going to do it, but just come on. I just don't know what to do. I'm tired. And God in heaven, like, if she just saved Jehovah Shalom, it's on and popping. But here's why I love God. Because even in my ignorance, when I didn't know what to say, he was still coming through for me. I want to pause real quick and I only want to preach to three folk because there's two types of people sitting in your row. It's one person who's sitting in here like I already knew that. But it's another type of person like, forget that. It's some seasons of my life where I don't have a clue why God even thought to come through for me. But grandmama had to, he said he will reach. Sit down. No, 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 no. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. I need you to catch this. I need you to catch this. Put this in your notes. Whenever you have a need, God has a name. I want you to really listen to what I just said. Whenever you have a need, God has a name. I'm going to say that again. Whenever you have a need. So I'm going to free. I'm going to be real bold. I want to look every person in this room and online in your face and tell you all of us may have different needs. And God is so cold-blooded. That for every individual need, there's a name. The same way you got one phone, many apps. He's one God, many. And the reason Grandmama Church, Michael, the reason Grandmama Church had way more power than ours. We got LED screens. We got 17 cameras. We got a whole praise team where everybody got their own mic. And Grandmama Church, it was two mics in the whole church. One of them was glued to the podium. The other one was in the corner in the choir stand. If you wanted to lead the song, you knew who was going to lead the song by who walked all the way to the corner and just stood there. She didn't say praise the Lord, saints. She didn't talk like Terrell. She waited till it took time. And every song was a whale song. Y'all know what a whale song is, don't it? Whale. So, and, and listen to me they didn't have a parking ministry park wherever you want to if you miss church you miss church you better pray somebody recorded it on a tape and you will have to go home put the tape on and listen we got on demand church apps streams and no power grandmama them had power not just because they knew God but they would stand up in church and testify. And see, the testimony ain't for the person who's speaking it. The, the testimony is for the folk who hear it. And you so private, you so secluded, you so prideful that you won't even share your testimony. Baby, you ain't the only one with bills behind. You ain't the only one who caught note almost got repossessed. I need a church that's real enough to say, hey, didn't have no money, didn't know what I was going to do, got a check in the mail, God came through. I believe that if God did it for me, I need you to look down your road and shout, let me testify. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. My family was broke too and we came together. My mind was crazy and he kept my mind. Somebody ought to jump up and shout, I receive all I receive. Hear me, because whatever the need is, there's a name. Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Jehovah Sabah. Who done heard that name before? Jehovah Sabah. Pastor Mike, no, no, no. We finna get Jehovah, Michael. Jehovah Sabah. My, Michael, you, you want to write it? Jehovah T-S-A-B-A. It's pronounced Sabah, Jehovah Sabah. What does that mean, PMJ? When I say Jehovah Sabah, his name is Jehovah Sabah, and it's in his nature to fight. I'm gonna mess the whole church up. 
when you say Jehovah Sabah, you say, hey God, you fight this one. Oh my God. You caught that, didn't you, boy? Jehovah Sabah. While you at work wrestling and fighting with nasty co-workers and they in their hat, hi, your manager mean and nasty like they doing something and you looking at them like, baby, what you make ain't enough for what I'm trying to do. I'm here because I got some kids and some bills. Trust and believe when Jehovah Jireh come through, I'm going to get out of here. But until then, Jehovah Sabah. Which means God, fight this battle for me. I need somebody who's in a fight right now for your mind, for your peace, for your vision, for your family, for your marriage. You ought to shout Jehovah Sabah. Fight this battle for. This is good. Hear me. So, so watch this. It means, it means you get, so, so watch this. Sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Terrell, I think I done caught my second win, boy. We was on the plane talking about we was gonna be tired, but some just gave me some energy, boy. Cause somebody, see, this is what I'm excited about. It's somebody sitting in here who ain't even clapping. Cause they not like that. You know, it's all types of Christians. They sitting in there and all they did was this. And they sit in there and then their neighbor looked at them like, how you ain't shouting? They gonna be the main one. Soon as they, matter of fact, while y'all was shouting, they was like this. Jehovah Shabbat. It means God fights. Now, now, go to 1 Samuel, because I want to give you scripture. Now, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I want to give you scriptorial context. Because watch, I don't think y'all appreciate what I'm giving y'all. I'm giving you, watch this, look at your chart now. His name is blank. It's in his nature to do blank. And I stand on, that's the scripture. First Samuel 17, 45. Stephon, oh, I'm at church, boy. This is what? Then David said to the Philistine, remember David and Goliath? I see. <laughs> His name always been there. But we've been so ready to shout, nobody told you. Bruh, bruh, so this is what we did. This is what we did. This is what we did. Yeah, man, David, this Goliath was talking all this trash. David rolled up on a boom, 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 slingshot. Who know about the slingshot? Who know Goliath was a giant? Who know David killed him? Who know did nobody want to fight and David stepped up? Who know David was only there because he had to bring his brother's lunch? Who know he cut off Goliath's head? How many stones did David have? Why did he have five stones? Goliath had four brothers. So, 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 so Goli David had five stones because Goliath had four brothers. So he was telling Goliath, I'm going to handle you. And if your brothers want some, I need seven gangster saints who can say, devil, I'm going to take you out. And because I got three other family, if you go to their house, I'm coming there too. I, 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 I got boy, y'all don't. So, 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 so five stones. Right, watch this. All right. So how many stones did he throw? How many stones did he take home? Five. No, Pastor Mike, that ain't math. How many stones he had? Five. How many stones did he throw? How many stones did he take home? Five. No, Pastor Mike, it's four. No, 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 no. Because remember, he cut off his head. So when he brought his head, the stone, which means when God fights for you, you don't lose nothing. I want to speak by faith. This is going to be the year that not only are you going to win, you ain't even going to lose what you got. I'm going to have church. By my and his name is Jehovah Sabah, which means God fight for be still and let Jehovah fight my battles. That's cold, ain't it? This is why uh, Terrell said something to me yesterday. We were eating. He said, he said one thing about Pastor Mike that messed me up. He said, forget all the other stuff people see. 
he's close to him. He said, your ability to handle negativity blows my mind. Hear me. He said, I, I, I see people talk about you. I see people. He said, in every facet of your life, from preaching to church to music, it's always something. He said, how you handle it. And I was sitting at the table and I didn't want to say it at the table because I was like, yeah, because he almost messed me up. Anybody ever say something about you? But then it make you think about all the stuff you kind of went through. So I go back to the room and I'm like, dang, when I started my church, it was a mess. When I start singing, it's a mess. I, 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 God. Then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, Mike, 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 the reason you can deal with it. I was like, why? You crazy enough to let me fight. If you really think about it, you may have always heard people say stuff about me. You've never really heard me say nothing to people. You want to know why? Jehovah Sabah is God. If God be for me. I'm going to say this. And I don't want you to shout if you ain't got no enemies. Don't shout if you ain't got no haters. Don't shout if you ain't got a real devil trying to block you. But I need you to walk around for the rest of this year like who? Y'all miss what I just said. Look at your neighbor and shout. You over there crying. Who? If God be for me, who's the who? Every ex, who? Every enemy, who? Every negative co-worker, who? Every demon, warlock, witch, and spirit, who? If God be for me, who? Somebody shout, my God! So, so, so hear me. It's called Jehovah Sabah. Jehovah Sabah. Jehovah Sabah. My son, my son playing in a championship game Thursday, right? And I was going to put it on the screen, but I ain't going to do him like that, all right? So my son plays safety. When I tell you this was the biggest eighth graders I've ever seen in my life, all right? Bigger than me. I'm, I'm like, what, what's going on? Hear me. Just big, big old boys, okay? I don't know what possessed Mason. He says, no, nah, today ain't the day. Dude takes out running. Mason runs full speed at this dude. Fast I've ever seen a word. Hit him. Boom. All right. In my head, he thought it was going to go like this. Boom. Ooh. Instead, it went like this. Boom. I look at Mason. He on the ground. And I'm like, oh, my, my son dead. Jeez. Oh, God. This boy, I got to go to jail. He just killed my son on this field. Did, he hit this dude. Dude stops. All the dude did was stop. Mason hit the ground. Everybody tapping him. All right, so after the game, I was like, Mace, was, was you okay? He said, yeah, it just, um, it knocked the wind out of me. He said, he said I was watching highlight tapes of Honey Badger and, and, and Sean Taylor, and, and I saw how they were just running through people. You know, so I just saw it. I was like, you know what? As long as you run full speed, you know, I, and I'm like, I'm like, are you all right? So we at home. I got him an Epsom salt bath. I'm like, bro, just take a bath. Get the boy some pain medicine. He, I mean, boom, boom. Boom. But, but what's crazy was we, we watched the whole film again. Every time he saw Mace now, five yards before he got to him, he was. I was like, Mace, he knocked you down, which means you lost the fight. I said, but if you notice, every time he run now, he, he looking. See, many of y'all think you're losing because you got knocked down. You don't even realize now the devil like whoa 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 whoa. No no, make sure you send some extra props. Cause hear me, they, they, they don't pray as long as they mama them half give an offering, but they know how to call. So 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 we know Goliath and David, but watch this. Watch what it says. David said, "But I come to you. Look at this scripture in the name. Throw it on the screen for him of the Lord of hosts." The God of the armies of Israel. I might not finish my sermon. Because this one statement should tear the whole church up. Because I told you Jehovah Sabah means what? All right. I got to free you. That's the first phase of it. He says, I come to you. I want to see if you catch this. In the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. See, see, this is rich. Jehovah Sabah does not just mean he's fighting. It means he's leading the fight. Y'all do not 
see what I'm talking. He's leading, Michael. He's leading the fight. Okay, he's leading. All right, we just had praise and worship, okay? The last song we sung, who led it? Terrell. All right, who sung it? So you have a praise team, a choir, but the song requires a leader. So when God fights for you, he said, no, not only am I in the fight, I am the commander. Okay, okay, why is this important? I'm all over the place. I got to go. Why is this important? All right, I want y'all to listen to me. Who remembers when Daniel was in intercession and he asked God to come through for him? And it took, Dan it took the angel 21 days to get to Daniel. Why? Because he was fighting. See, this is stuff we don't talk about. So you know about the Daniel fast. Why was he fasting? Because he was needing results from God. And, and watch this. The angel came to Daniel and was like, hey, God been heard you. But for 21 days, I've been fighting. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So, so watch this, watch this. For every person who's frustrated because you've been praying and it feels like God hasn't come through, you have to understand that the first fight is never physical. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. The angel said, I've been trying to get to you, but for 21 days I've been warring. The devil deployed demons to try to block my arrival. All right? Front side is my identity. Back side is my ethnicity. This side shows you I'm black. This side tells you who I am, fingerprints. To every front side, there's a black back side. To every front side, there's a back side. Let me make that make sense, okay? So the front side is God blocked your problems. Back side is the devil tried to block your blessing. And, and so, the, so the front side is God is Jehovah Jireh. The back side is the thief comes to steal. Can I ask you a question? Why does he have a name? Because the enemy is busy. What if you frustrated and God like, baby, I already answered that prayer. It's caught up in transit. You want to know what I wish? Don't laugh at me. I wish my prayers had tracking numbers. That's why I don't like this church. Y'all get real super spiritual on me, man. Y'all be so, Father God, oh, shut up, God, bye, bye. No, no, forget that. I wish my prayer, if, if, if God ever come to my bedside and be like, Michael, I'm like, is that you, God? Yes. What can I do for you? All right, all right, all right, all right. How many things you going to do? I am not a genie. All right, no disrespect, but you, you came to my room. I'm trying to see what I can get. Then I'm going to be like, all right, tracking numbers. What you mean? I'm like, because I be praying, and I don't know if you be busy or lazy or what, but it's like I asked you for this like six years ago. Do you know God don't come at you? One day for you is a th thousand days or not. Where's my package at, God? I'm about to cut somebody, and I asked you for a little piece, and you in my room talking about some one day with you. What's the tracking number? Am I preaching to anybody? I wish I could pay extra for Express. Hey God, I, I paid my tithe, but here's another 25 so I can get here by Tuesday. It don't work like that. Everybody would be tithing, wouldn't it? Hey, hey, pay your tithe. It's a tracking number. But if you had the tracking number, you wouldn't need faith. If you knew it was coming, how would God knew he could trust you? Hear me, hear, this is rich, this is rich. There's a name for that. If you don't hear nothing I'm saying today, I try my best to preach in a practical way, but it yet substantive so you learn something. 
I want you to just leave with this one big thought. There's a name for that. So do me a favor. Before you pick up the phone and start calling, begging, and fussing, see which name you ain't called. When it's something strange in the neighborhood, who you gonna call? It's Buster. Remember that song? So, uh, 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 who you gonna call? Ghostbuster. I ain't afraid of no ghost. You remember that? Who you gonna call? Who you gonna call? When life get hard, they can't sleep at night. Who you gonna call? It's a name for that. The Bible says he never sleeps. So why you up? If both of us got to be up. See, I'm, I'm, I'm. Let's, let's just deal with this practically. This is a good message. This is really good. This is really good. All right, so uh, let's, let's be practical. Who got a job? Okay. Who work at night? Anybody? Okay. Who work during the day? Okay. You go to work tomorrow. You finna get off at five. Watch this. <laughs> and somebody come up to you and say, I need you to stay to 10. Watch, watch this. <laughs> watch, watch this. I'm not going to pay you no more. You ain't going to make nothing overtime. But I need you to stay till 10. What you going to say? Okay. Yeah, no, you're not going to say no. <laughs> it's going to be another word <laughs> in front of no. But don't say it. Don't, don't say it. We're not going viral. We're not going viral. We're not going viral. Can I ask you a question? Life is work. And, we, and whether you go to bed or stay up, it ain't finna change. But then God, like, I'm clocked in. So let's just say I'm gonna go to sleep from, let's just say 10 to 6, 10 to 7. God, like, I work that shift. Can I ask you a question? Why both of y'all on the clock? There's a name. I, I got it. Jehovah Sabah. I ain't got them a scripture yet. Jehovah Shalom. So Gideon and built an altar to the Lord there and called it the Lord is peace. All right. All right. The Lord is peace. Now, now here's what's crazy. And y'all don't mind. I'm, I, I, just, I, I just want to really make it plain. I believe songs have ruined more Christians than the devil. Now, just listen to my theory. Because when we write songs about God and to God, we have to paraphrase. People are more apt to listen to music than read a scripture. One, one person said, if you want to hide something from a person, put it in a book. Okay? All right, so one of my favorite songs growing up, my mom would listen to every day. She's like, you are my peace. You are my peace. You are my peace. And I worship you. You have delivered my soul from the hand. Every night. When I say every night, my mom played it until we went to sleep. Every night. Every night in the den, on the stereo, it would be blast till we woke up in the morning. That's how she would make sure everybody... Because, see, she believed that the enemy would be lurking in drink. So she was like, no, I want my whole house covered while we sleep. That might be good for you. Just play some worship music every now and then. You're going to sleep. <laughs> you wonder why you wake up on your ex. What would you? <laughs> okay, so that's, a, that's, that's another series. Okay. But the scripture says, I want you to listen to this. Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. You want to know one of the biggest misconceptions we make about God is that he brings stuff. He doesn't just bring stuff. 
Watch, watch, God, watch this, watch this. He is. So, 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 so God isn't bringing you peace. See, see, let me, I want to fix it. Here's what we think. God, I need some peace. God shows up and says, peace. No, God says, he don't bring you joy. He is. God is. And, and, and see, what we don't realize is we keep thinking. Think about it. When you get hungry, if I feed you, I'm bringing you food. He is the bread of life. If you get thirsty, I can bring you. He said, drink from me and you'll never thirst again. <laughs> so Gideon, watch this. So let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Here it is. I'm going to get you out of here. Here it is. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. David calls him Jehovah Sabah. Gideon calls him Jehovah Shalom. So I want you to know where it comes from now. You remember Gideon, right? Who was really a farmer or whatever. And God told him to go fight, and he had never fought. God gave him victory. He said, no, 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 I got to build an altar. You are Jehovah Shalom. You brought me peace. So after every victory, they built the altar, or they named him. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sabah. Watch this. Exodus, listen to this. Listen to this. I'm going to see if you catch this. Exodus 15, 26. If I don't finish this, I'll finish it next week, okay? Watch this. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep it, all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. I want to see if you catch this. For I am the Lord who heals you. Okay, you, you missed it. 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 Gideon, you are Jehovah Shalom. David, you are Jehovah Sabah. Abraham, you are Jehovah Jira. This text, I am the Lord who heals. Watch this. Which means he called himself Jehovah Rapha. So, so put, put this in your notes. Put this in your notes. Thank you, Leslie. There are two types or two levels of names. Two levels of names that we learn. The names that we give him and the names he give himself. When we give a name, we say God is. When he gives a name, he says, I. So, so, so I need you to catch this. This is so rich and I need you to catch this. I came to submit to you that whether you call him a name that was given or a name he took, there's a name for that. In today's text, we meet Jehovah Jireh. After he experiences God's nature, which is to provide. We live in a culture where most people are chasing an illusion of success that exists without sacrifice. We live in a culture where most people are chasing an illusion of success that exists without sacrifice. Make that make sense, Pastor Mike? We are chasing this illusion that you can be successful and not sacrifice nothing. IG, TikTok. Facebook has everybody thinking you can become everything you ever dreamed without sacrifice. One of the greatest enemies of sacrifice is not selfishness, but being safe. I don't miss what I just said. One of the greatest enemies to your sacrifice is not selfishness, it's playing it safe. Many of us are not selfish, but we are comfortable. And because we're comfortable, we're playing it safe. What if the prerequisite to experiencing Jehovah Jireh is wrapped up in allowing our obedience to evolve into sacrifice? What if you haven't experienced Jehovah Jireh because you thought obedience was enough? There's another level called sacrifice. Obedience is when we trust God to provide for our need. Sacrifice is when we trust God to provide for our next. I'm going to say it again. Obedience is when we trust God to provide for our need. Sacrifice is when we, when we expect provide. Sacrifice is when we trust God to provide for our next. So let me make that, let me make that say, I'm obedient when I pay my tithe. He meets a need. I'm obedient when I pray. He meets a need. I'm obedient when I live right. He meets a need. When I need the overflow, it requires a sacrifice. 
All right, I, I want to free you. 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 Eat right. You have a pretty good. Eat right, your body will do what it needs to do, right? Sacrifice and get up and go to the gym. It looks, uh, it just looks different. I met a brother the other day. I saw him like, man, 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 man. He, was, he was cut. Like, dude was cut up. I was like, dang. You know, you, you ever met somebody like who, no, no hater in you, no hater in you, pause, no hater in you or nothing like that. You know, but it's just like, man, I mean, you, you guys, you're like, man, you, you know, you, you strong. I was like, man, how many times a day you work out? He was like, man, I go mornings and nights. Five days a week, man. It, I, I, I don't play. He said, like, no. I, he started telling me the story. And I was like, how much you weigh? And he weighed what I weighed. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. How much do you weigh? Then he said something to me that I would have hit him, but I saw his muscles. He was like, yeah, you know, he said, no, we weigh the same. He said, you know, I'm only like 3% body fat. Do you probably, I said, don't say it, don't say it. Don't do that. Don't do that. I got the tone on me. Don't, hey, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that now. But it made me realize both of us the same 230, but it looked different. He is look like sacrifice. We both carrying the same weight. Yet his looked better because he wasn't just obedient. He, this is why your circle can't stand you. It's because we come from the same place. We went to the same place. But the problem is I got another level called sacrifice. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is where you're trying to get not going to get there without sacrifice. People see all this stuff I'm doing, they would swear I'm balling out of control. He just performed to a sold out, yada, yada, yada. No, that was a promotional event. I didn't get nothing for real for that. I paid to take everybody with me because it was a certain look I wanted. You know what I'm saying? It was a radio function. It was this. And I said, you know what? Whatever it takes, I'm going to fly all them down on my dime. I'm going to get the rooms where we got to do because when I go up, I want to make sure my presentation looks right. You feel me? But, but I be meeting people who be like, yeah, man, I just came by myself. They ain't helping. I was like, God bless you. I'd rather sacrifice. Watch this. Because if I sacrifice this time, you know what they said before I left? No, we got to bring you back. You know what I said? What a bad at. Because, no, 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 no. Because I made the sacrifice. Hear, hear, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Pastor Mike, I love him so much. Do me a favor. Pastor Mike, I just met somebody and I really like him. Sacrifice touching him. Because you touched the last person. You kissed the last person. You did the... You, you... you know you talk with me. Are we going to be real or not? You know what you do? Now trust and believe. So by the time I'm through with him, and where you at now? Where's she at now? So do me a favor. This time, sacrifice. Hey, I, I want to be very real with you, man. Like, no, I'm all man. I'm all man. And trust me, the way you look, trust, trust me. It would, if it had just been six weeks ago, it would have been over. But my pastor told me that if I really want a wife, I'm going to just sacrifice. You want to know? And she said, I ain't got time for that. That ain't wifey. Yeah. Because yeah. a real one will be like, oh my God. Yeah. What? Do you see me? I see you, but I'm trying to sacrifice for my next. And if I don't sacrifice for my next, you just going to be my now. And because you won't sacrifice for your next, you're going to be my now. And in six months, you're going to be my used to. It's sacrifice. I've made a sacrifice in my house now. I set my alarm, set my alarm for 1.14. That's the number God put in my heart. 1.14 a.m. It goes off. I jump up. All I do is just walk past my baby's room and just pray. 
I just pray. That's all I do. I said, Lord, I, see, we got, we got boys now. It, it's, it's just different. It, it, it's just it's just different. They handsome. They athletic. That you know these girls, peer pressure. You, I'm, I'm being honest with you. It's 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 just real. They're asking me real questions. Now, Dad, I heard so and so talk about this. What's that? I'm like. Okay, this this so and so so and so, this so and so. So dad, so they told me something about a pen. Is, is this pen you can use? But it's not. I'm like, okay, let me tell you what that is. So so I'm so I'm, I'm but I'm I'm covering their spirits. They not gonna be perfect. They don't ever have to be Pastor Mike kid. I don't, I don't play that. No 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 no. So I'm sacrifice. I'm, I'm I'm hoping God says, I see what you're trying to do for your babies. Can I ask you a question? The law of sacrifice suggests. That you must give up to go up. Michael, the law of sacrifice suggests that you must give up. I'm going to stop. I know I'm going long. To go up. And what I'm trying to get somebody in the room to realize that, that, that the next, somebody say next, is tied to your sacrifice. The only reason, Genesis 22, 2. Three twos, that's a number right there, two, 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 22. Then God said, take your son, your only son. If I had time, I would tell you why he calls him his only son. Most people say he taught, one scholar said he calls Isaac the only son because remember last week, Abraham had a baby by his maid called who? Ishmael. So one scholar said he calls him the only son because God didn't recognize the bastard child. That's a lie. I don't believe that. I personally, that's not my personal belief. I believe that theology is slanted to force people to think that, that having a child out of wedlock is demonic. It's levels to it. I, I, I do believe in sins, but I, do believe, I don't believe that's why God said in this particular text, he's the only son. I personally believe he calls him your only son in this text because by this point, Abraham had kicked Ishmael and the maid out. He only had one left. Think about it. Why would God have shame on Ishmael when he told her to go back and serve? Because remember, she told him, God, you see me. Take your son, your only son, the one whom you love, Isaac. He loved her because he was by his wife. Remember, the wife couldn't do what? Have babies. Now she had a baby. So the one you really love and go to the region of Moriah. Mariah, Mount Mariah, Mount High Place, Mariah Learning. So I want to teach you a lesson. In order to teach you a lesson, I need you to take you to a high place of higher learning. Mariah Learning on a mountain, Mount High Learning. So watch this. Take the son, the only one you got left, by the woman you really love, to a high place of learning and kill him. Sacrifice him. Do you see how he set him up? Take the thing that I gave you that you have been waiting on. Now, let's pause, let's interject, and let's take something out of the text. Take son out, see yourself, okay? Then God said, when I say God said, I want you to say your name. Then God said, take this job, this job, the one you was believing me for, walk off it. I'm going to say, then God said, you shout your name. Then God said, take this relationship, the one you've been waiting on to propose to you for the last seven years, and the wedding in two weeks, cancel it. Everybody want to shout when God gives you a good word. Don't nobody want to listen when he gives you a hard word. I know God told me to leave Boutwell. That was the hardest thing I did. It helped my ego. You know how I made, let's just be practical. When somebody say, man, you having church in an arena? Well, you know God's moving. No, egotistically, it make you feel good. Strategically, it was the only place we could put everybody. So that means if I leave God, well, I got now preach six times a day. And God said, I ain't here no more. You can stay all you want to, I'm gone. Take the thing. For six years, I have been trying to get in that building. Take the thing. Yeah, the thing you believe me, fasted, prayed, and sold for. Kill it. Offer it to me as an offering. On a mountain, I will show you. Next verse. I want you to catch this. Watch this. Provision is the act of providing in advance. So can you write that in your notes? Put that in your phone. I'm finna stop. Can I borrow seven minutes and give it back to you next week? 
Okay, all right, don't leave. Anybody get up and leave. I'm gonna talk about you from the microphone. All right, so here it is. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna get, <laughs> somebody, no, I'm just playing. Somebody gotta go to work like, if I get fired, you gonna pay my provision. I want you to write this word provision because we say words in church we don't understand. Provision. Provision is the act of providing in advance. So when you say God's provision, provision is when God is God enough to put something in place before you know you need it. In other words, provision is put in place before there was a problem. Can, can I say it like this, Stefano? He was working on your cure before you knew you were sick. And he t- I, I got to stop because we're running out of time. I'm going to stop right here. I got to stop. And, and so he says, take Isaac. So early the next morning, he saddles his donkey, took him and two servants and his son Isaac. He cut enough wood. Look what he said. The text says, and when he cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place. When he cut enough wood, the, the cutting is symbolic of consecration. I want to leave you on this note. What do you need to cut before he provides? That's one of the things I've been telling my boys lately. Like, hey, I know y'all want to fit in, but it's just certain circles daddy might not want you in. You know, so I try to lovingly lead them. Like, just like, hey, man, I love Jay. When Jayla come back over? Oh, I love Jamar, man. Oh, Macy saw eight. I like him. I, I, I try my best to subtly suggest, especially with my oldest. He in the ninth, he in high school. He in a real locker room now. He had a real school. I took him to the homecoming dance. Everybody looked grown. He want to go to Waffle House. You know, so I'm like, Lord, just keep my baby. But, but I'm learning in order... Mm, for God to really keep him, I got to let go of him. How is God going to keep my babies if I'm, if I'm, this funny story, I'm at Waffle House in the parking lot looking through the window. Y'all finna scream. I called my brother who was picked because my son and his daughter go to the same school. I said, D, uh, what they in there doing? He, he said, where you at? I said, I said, I'm outside. He's like, I don't see you. I said, I'm at right, here, right here on 280. He said, no. I'm outside the wrong Waffle House. <laughs> Hear me. I'm out the wrong, I'm outside the, I'm, it was a dude in there with locks just like that. I'm like, who is that girl he's sitting next to? I thought my son had dated somebody else. I was like, oh, wow. I'm at the wrong Waffle House. I have to drive across town to pick my son up from another Waffle House. You want to know what? They ain't do nothing but have just good fun. Laugh, talk, do TikTok dances. But in my head, my son was going to be a daddy. Like, like in my head, I, gonna, I am too fly to be a granddaddy this early. But I had to realize I got to cut that wood. Like, yeah. God going to keep them. He going to keep them. And, and he gets there, and you can play softly. I'm going to stop. I got seven more pages, but I'm going to stop. He gets to the place, right? He cuts the wood. He tells his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. This can tear the church up. We will worship. Listen to every word. Then we will come back to you. No, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Go sacrifice your son. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Y'all stay here because you can't take everybody to certain places. It's something I want to say, but I've matured a little bit and I've grown up a whole lot, so I'm just not going to say it. But notice who he made them stay with. Do y'all know how hard it is for me not to say what's in my heart? Because I really want to be like, you need to... 
he says, no, y'all two stay with the donkey. We going to worship. We'll be back. He lays his son down. He builds the altar, everything. Lays his son down. And his son says to him, this is cold-blooded. I see the wood. I see the... But where's the lamb? Listen to this. I see fire. I see wood. And daddy, you know I'm not crazy, right? Because you're a good father... Every time you do this, you kill something. Who, who this for? And he tells his son, the Lord, I'm going to say it better. Let's quote the scripture. Abraham answered, God himself will. So, so let me free you. Oh, let me free you. Jehovah Jireh does not just mean provider. Stop putting slang on a name. Jehovah Jireh provider. Jehovah Jireh, God himself. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Listen to this. Listen to this. I got to stop. I got to stop. They went in agreement. Abraham raises the knife. I'm going to paraphrase. He raises the knife. And right when he raises the knife, he looks over. You can find that scripture, Leslie. And it's a ram caught in the thicket. Watch this. I want to free you. Raise the knife. All of a sudden, he hears a voice say, do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now that I know you fear God, and you were willing to make the sacrifice. Next scripture. He provides. He looked up. And there in the thicket. This is cold-blooded. Thicket. A ram stuck in a sticker bush. Caught by the horns. He went over, took the ram. And here's where I want you to stand with me if you don't mind. Let's go home. Stand with me right here. He went over took the ram and here's where we miss it brother he sacrificed the ram sacrificed the ram why is that important pastor mike we so busy shouting the lord provides we miss the fact that something still got sacrificed and what i want you to realize is just because god provides doesn't mean you still don't have to sacrifice something. And I want you to catch this, and I'm done. What do you have to give up so you can go up? And that's real. It's very real, man. To a brother listening to me right now, you got a good girl, bro. You got a good one, man. You might have to give up kicking it with the fellas. Man, bro, man, you letting that girl. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very real with you. A good woman will shift your whole life, bro. Like, don't, don't listen to these fools out here. A good one? Man, what? A good one? You might have to sacrifice kicking it. They're going to call you names, soft, weak, whipped. You're going to look back at them and say, husband. <laughs> Sacrifice. I told Terrell yesterday, we were in the DMV, and it was special. Like, it, like tonight, like, I'm going to sit outside for a minute tonight and just reflect. I don't think, like y'all have always loved me and I wrestle with a lot of insecurities and anxiety. You know, so, so a lot of times y'all think y'all coming to church to get something from me. Y'all don't know how much it means to me to see you. You know, that's why I stand here sometimes six hours and hug, it just means so much to me. But to go to a whole nother state and every lyric, every verse, every line, 
um, a sporadic altar call where people just run into the, and I'm sitting, I'm like, Lord. And I went to the back and I told Terrell because I was tired. When I say tired, it was hurting all in here. And I told him, I said, mid-performance, the Holy Spirit said, you got one chance. I said, God doing all this for me, and I don't even have the wherewithal to sacrifice to make the vehicle I got to do it in right. I said, no, nah. I said, hold me accountable, bro. I said, I, I got to get right. I, I want to be, I want to run in the yard with my boys and my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I want to be around another 75 years. If, if I'm going to be doing all this preaching, I want to make sure I'm fit. You, you know what I'm saying? I want, I want to make sure certain, it's a sacrifice required. You got me? Sacrifice required. I had to be standing here today, man. I told him, I said, I don't have no off days. I said, I took a break. No, it's, it's church for me now. It's, it's go time. So if that's all of us getting up at 340, driving all the way to the airport, sitting there for an hour, because it was the only airport that would get us here on a straight flight, it is what it is. None of us been home. Side note, Terrell had that on yesterday. <laughs> oh, you didn't ask that? Okay, never mind. I could have swore he had that black sheep hoodie. Uh, okay, okay, got you. In other words, that's sacrifice. Anybody who know how much he loved clothes? Sacrifice. I'm trying to make you laugh, but I, I pray you leave here knowing like, man, he right. He right. You may have to sacrifice being right to be righteous. I want to free you, bro, you right. She wrong, you right. He wrong, you right. Now let me ask you a question. What does it matter? So maybe you need to sacrifice ego and say, you know what? How can I fix this? How can I fix this? There's a lot of things in my life I wish I could do better. And this next half of my life, I just want to make sure I'm in his will. You get what I'm saying? And that's so special to me, church, and to everybody watching from around the world. Please hear your boy when I say this. No, I feel like my granddaddy. No man knows the day nor the hour. Amen. Elder Tiffany and T.O. buried their grandmother yesterday only for her to find out her uncle passed last night. That's why Elder Tiffany's not here. We're praying with her and her family. Right before I get ready to walk out, one of the members texts him, Pastor Mike, pray my stepfather just passed. And I'm like, Lord, Bishop Theo Bailey, prominent bishop in our city, spoke. A lot of what you see right now, he spoke. He was like, Michael, that boy right there gonna be different. Him, he would call me, hey, 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 trust and believe, listen to, listen, he, listen to Papa. You're going to win these awards, this song, sweet, before everybody heard big. Found him in his bed, passed away. Life is short. While we fussing about who better, and we fussing about who car nicer, and, and, and you mad with your mom and them over something stupid. What if she don't answer? Help, like real talk. You and you, you mad at your mama because she ain't do something. And if you went outside right now and got a text, get to the house, mama ain't responding. Does her not keeping your kids matter? So do me a favor, church. I don't want to raise the offering. If, if you're going to give, you know how I am. If you're going to give, that's between you and God. I ain't raising an offering. I do want to raise an offering of people who will make a decision to give up so you can go up. And I don't know who I'm preaching to. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're in this room and you know right now as I'm speaking, it's already clicking some of the stuff you need to sacrifice. Just slip a hand in the air. Father, in this room and online, our answer is yes. It may hurt, but I know it's going to be worth it. God, as much as I enjoy it, it's costing me my peace. 
as much as I enjoy it, it's costing me my joy. So in this moment, God, I ask that you give me the strength to make the sacrifice. God, the reason I love this story about Abraham so much is because you could have just took his son, but you wanted to see if he would be obedient. And not only would he be obedient, would he sacrifice? So God, today I ask that you forgive me publicly for the places I should have made sacrifices, but I didn't. I ask God that you forgive us publicly for the seasons of our life where we weren't as obedient as you required from us. God, forgive me for the seasons where I negotiated when I should have just said, yes, sir. Forgive me for the seasons when I made rules for myself that were exceptions when I knew it wasn't what you said. God, forgive all of us for the places in our life that we just didn't measure up. Now, God, give us the strength to just be who you called us to be. God, I ask in this moment, if there's anybody in this room who doesn't know you, that it's a simple prayer that they could pray, Lord, come into my heart. Make me over again. God, I pray a special prayer, one I've never prayed at our church, but I ask you for publicly right now. God, every man in this city who needs you, send them to this church, God. God, if you don't mind, we need a man church, God. We, we need brothers who have a heart for God. God, I'm not asking for people who got it all together. Let them come even if they got weed in their pocket. Eat. Even if they were out the night before, let them know that there's a place that'll just take them just as they are. God, if we ever needed them, we need them right now. God, send a sister to the church who's a prayer warrior. Send a sister to the church who knows how to call on your name. God, cover our babies. God, they may be 40 years old, but they still somebody's baby. Cover them, God. Allow them to be what you called them to be. Now, God, I pray a special prayer of health over us. That's sick. It seems like our kids are catching bugs and viruses and getting sick. So God, right now, be Jehovah Rapha. That is the God that heals. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, clap your hands, church. Y'all ready to go home? I'm excited. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Couple things before you leave. Next Sunday is Pink Sunday. We're asking everybody to wear pink. You heard it in the news. Wear pink next Sunday. Got to find me some pink to wear so we can be in support and we can stand with those. We're going to do a big balloon release afterwards and just pray and love on people. If you're here and you're currently wrestling with something like that, please call the church this week. We would just love to do something special for you, let you know that we love you. To some of my members that I know, um, and I mean this, man, we try our best to be what we can be. I've even sat on FaceTime during chemo sometimes. They've been in there and... They get bored, and um, one of the things I do want to say is thank you to all of the nurses. Uh, Rod, who's wrestling with some things, uh, he had to go for dialysis. My musical director, he had to go for dialysis, and it was just a blessing because he's like, Pastor Mike, I'm in there getting dialysis, and everybody in there go to the church. It was, it was bringing me extra blankets and everything. So that was just a blessing to me. So thank you to everybody who sacrifices and does that. Don't forget the Fall Festival, October 31st at 6 p.m., right here. It'll be a trunk or treat. I don't know how to sign up. I don't know how that works. Better yet, we'll just send a link out. Is that cool? Uh, if you text Rock, Rock Nation to 28950, if you get the text blast from the church, we'll send a link out and let you know what time to come so we can set your car up so you can be a blessing to all of the kids. Man, we love you guys so, so, so much. One of my favorite singers in the world is in the back kind of sneaking, just sitting there. Jaleesa, can you rave at everybody? That's Jaleesa Faye right there, y'all. She's one of the best singers in the world. She sings with James. She sings with Ty Trivet. Everybody, she's one of my favorite, 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 favorite. Thank you so much for coming. To everybody who came from far and wide, we love you so much. God bless you. I want to ask a special thing. I've been up for like 19 hours. Is it okay if I just go to my office after church today, y'all? Can I get released just a little bit? Thank you. I don't want nobody to think I'm being arrogant. Like, no, I work for y'all. I have to ask for permission off. And so I thank y'all so much, man. Keep us in your prayers. I, my baby boy got a little sick this morning. That's why a lady couldn't make it today. Miles started kind of just throwing up all over the place. So I'm going to let her stay there with them. I'm going to go find somewhere to go because uh, I got too much. I, uh, devil is a lie. Jehovah Rapha, me. So, no, nah, man. So, no, nah, man. I love you so much. 
I pray a simple prayer. Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. And I love y'all so much. I'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. <laughs> wow, wow, man, man, it's it that gets better and better every Sunday. Every Sunday, I mean, the message was absolutely incredible, incredible. and yeah. we got some rerocks going on Definitely. later. So make sure if you know some people that that you feel that need this message, mm -hmm. be sure that they that you text it and make sure they tune in and via YouTube later tonight and also on Tuesdays at seven yes. o'clock. And if you made that decision today and you listen to the message and you want to give your life back to Christ, if you want to join a family of people who really love uh -huh. each other and we all are caring and here to, for you, please text home to 28950. We have people that want to connect with uh -huh. you so that you can be a part of our family and that we can help you make that next step in God. Yeah, Bill, and, um, and as we uh, talk about next steps, yeah. uh, we can't do this without your faithful giving. Yes. So all the information is on the screen. Um, if you feel like this place is uh, uh, has blessed you this yes. this house has really truly blessed you and and you want to assist with blessing other people yes. we should have give we should have give information on the screen yes. uh text our rock and the number you want to give to two eight nine five zero you don't want to miss out on the opportunity to be a blessing but also next week what is it pink sunday it's pink sunday you guys we are celebrating everyone who has fighting breast cancer maybe you survived it maybe you might have had a family member that passed yep. away but we want to celebrate Celebrate and come in and do everything that we can to honor those people. Um, so be sure that you wear your pink Rock next the Sunday. Pink. Watch mm -hmm. the pink next Sunday. And also, uh, don't forget to join us for Devo oh, Energy. Energy Monday through Friday, 7 21 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it's it. It's getting better and better every single week. So <laughs> please don't miss it. It goes crazy. So look, we'll see you tomorrow morning. YouTube and Facebook mm -hmm. with Devo Energy. At 721. Peace.